the direction they were going with this documentary. And a lot of people are going to say, well, you're going to look at particular people in this documentary, guys like Jerry Krause, Scottie Pippen, Michael Jordan, Phil Jackson, and you're going to look at them completely different. Or maybe you're going to just realize who they are as people behind closed doors. Now, we all know who Phil Jackson is. Phil Jackson is a guy that is a Karma Sutra guy who likes to meditate. And uh, this is a guy that is one of the greatest minds, basketball minds we have ever seen. The triangle offense uh, really came from the New York Knicks teams in the 70s. And he really transitioned the game with guys like Michael Jordan and Scottie Pippen and Dennis Rodman and Shaquille O'Neal and Kobe Bryant. He changed the game with his style implemented into the NBA game. But this story, the 98 Bulls, really should have never happened. And if you watched the documentary, the first two episodes, you could see that Jerry Krause wanted to completely terminate this team. He wanted to take apart this team. He no longer wanted Phil Jackson as the head coach. Obviously, he was going to keep Michael Jordan there. But Scottie Pippen, he wanted to trade. Dennis Rodman was on his way out because of his craziness <laughs> on and off the, <laughs> uh, off the court. Still today. <laughs> and, and you look at the players like uh, Weatherton and, and, and uh, not Paxson, I'm sorry, Steve Kerr and Tony Kukoc. You watch the growth of this team. And really, I was alive to watch the success of the Chicago Bulls of the late 80s and early 90s and mid-90s. And Michael Jordan was the greatest basketball player to ever play the game. I don't want to hear about Bill Russell. I don't want to hear about Walt Chamberlain. Uh, I'm sorry, Walt Chamberlain. I don't want to hear about Walt Frazier or Oscar Robinson. Or any of the guys in the NBA, including LeBron James. The greatest basketball player to ever play the game is Michael Jordan. But even with greatness, you see the backlash of who Michael Jordan was. Not only was he a charismatic guy on and off the, the court. This guy wanted to win at all costs. That's who he was. He didn't care if he was going to put down every single player on his team. If they weren't going to play hard, he was going to push them to play hard. And if they weren't going to play hard, and they're not showing that they could play hard, he would make sure that the coach sits in and plays the other guy on the bench, even if you don't even know who the hell he is. Michael Jordan was a determined athlete. He's When, when you look at some of the greatest athletes to ever play professional sports, Muhammad Ali, he had something about him that nobody can compete with. Nobody. Fly like a butterfly, sting like a bee. He always had that terminology that when he was standing in front of his opponent, he would scare him before he walked in the ring. He knew he was going to lose before he walked in the ring. You talk about Wayne Gretzky. Wayne Gretzky was one of the quietest athletes, great athletes of all time. But Wayne Gretzky was the greatest hockey player in people's eyes to ever play the game. And anybody that has ever met Wayne Gretzky will tell you he doesn't have much to say. And he's not one of those guys that you can get into a, 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 full, you know, a full conversation with. He's not that type of person. Michael Jordan was a guy that would speak to the press. He wouldn't back up on anything he's ever said. When he would go up there after he wins his first championship all the way to his sixth championship, Michael Jordan was straightforward from top to bottom on what he had to say. And he said in 97, if Phil Jackson doesn't come back, I'm not coming back. He said that in 97 before this documentary even started in episode one. I didn't even know that. That's interesting. They gave Phil Jackson a short leash. Jerry Krause and, and Phil Jackson, at the end of both these guys' Chicago Bulls careers, and Jerry Krause wasn't too far after Phil Jackson. 
Jerry Krause ruined the dynasty of the Chicago Bulls. He built the dynasty. He was the one that took over for Rob Thorne. He, the last gift he gave to the Chicago Bulls was Michael Jordan. Jerry Krause took over, and he built around Michael Jordan. Bringing in Scottie Pippen after Seattle drafted him. And making the trade at the, tra- at the draft and bringing Scottie Pippen in to be his Robin from Batman and Michael Jordan. Then in the, the mid-90s, bringing in Dennis Rodman to help them win the back-to-back-to-back years in 96, 97, and 98. Jerry Krause built this team. But what he built, he took apart. And he made sure he took it apart. Very suddenly, too. This team probably could have won at least two more titles. Definitely in 99. Especially in the, uh, the year of um, the half a season when the strike came out in 99. And everybody remembers the NBA Finals. It was the Knicks versus the, the San Antonio Spurs. The Knicks is the eighth seed. <laughs> and San Antonio swept the New York Knicks. But what happens if the Knicks were the Chicago Bulls? The 98, 97, and 96 Chicago Bulls. Do the San Antonio, the young San Antonio Spurs beat the veteran top heavy with Michael Jordan and Scottie Pippen Chicago Bulls? I don't think so. I don't. That's a lot of size and a lot of great defense in that match if they were to play each other. It would have been interesting. I think David Robinson was the only old guy on that Spurs team. And that was David Robinson's last year after he won a championship. Oh, I thought he won two. Okay. No, he won one. Oh, okay. I, I'll tell you this. You go back in time and you compare the Chicago Bulls to any team. Of all time. In in any sport. The 90's Chicago Bulls. Are probably a top three. Out of every single sport. Yeah I was going to say. You probably have the 1927 Yankees. That's probably one of them. I don't know. Who who would it be for football? Probably one of the Steelers teams. The Green Bay Packers. You think which. I'm not talking about the Super Bowls. One of the Lombardi teams. Yeah when they won like five championships. In like seven years. Oh I think you're referring to an individual year. Oh I'm talking about how dominant they were. Oh yeah. All right. The Green Bay Packers. The Lombardi Green Bay Packers. And even the Patriots. Of this era. You're talking about some of the greatest. You know winning. When it comes to professional sports. Mm. But when you watch this first episode, really going into the second episode, they treated Scottie Pippen like a piece of garbage. Scottie Pippen, who was one of the top ten players in the NBA, at the time with Larry Bird and still Isaiah Thomas and Magic Johnson and Charles Barkley and Patrick Ewing and Clyde Drexler and all the great players we saw in the 90s. Scottie Pippen was amongst the best in the top 10 of the NBA. And this guy was one of the, one of the least paid players in all of the league. Mm-hmm. I didn't know that either. That was crazy. That would never happen today. This is a man that was also... He barely was a walk-on on a Division II basketball team. And nobody thought he was going to be the fifth pick in the draft and drafted by the Seattle Supersonics, which the Chicago Bulls wanted to move up and get him. And somehow, Jerry Krause found a way to make the trade in the middle of the draft after he was drafted by the Seattle Supersonics. Could you imagine, and could you imagine what the league would have transitioned in if Scottie Pippen went to Seattle and not to Chicago? They, the, Chicago and Seattle played each other in the finals, too. You wonder if that could have altered that series. I forget, it was a 93 or 95, one of those years. That could have altered that whole series, and they would have a title, too. And as, as you look at it, before Michael Jordan left for a year and a half and retired to go and play baseball because of the death of, the death, uh, the death of his father, Michael Jordan and the, uh, and the Chicago Bulls could have won... Instead of six championships in a row, they could have won eight. They probably could have won ten, if you think about it. 
Because the two years that he missed, that if he played, they would have never lost against the, the Orlando Magic in the Eastern Conference Finals. They would have never lost against Orlando. And who knows what would have happened against them and the Rockets. Nobody would have known. And, and if you remember that draft, when, when Michael Jordan was drafted, Hakeem Olajuwon was in the same draft. Number one pick. And they were talking about it all over radio today. Were the Rockets wrong for drafting Hakeem Olajuwon over Michael Jordan? No, I don't think so at that time because he was also a better college player than Michael Jordan was. And he, all, he played at Houston. So it's a, a guy they have fans already loved. So you can't go wrong for that. It's just, again, Jordan was greater. Elijah was one of the best big men of all time. So it's not that regrettable either. Nobody's at saying that. At, you, least not, at least they're not the number two pick. It's, it's, a question, <laughs> it's a question that the only team that can answer that is the Houston Rockets. Not me, not you, or anybody can answer that. Because if they had Michael Jordan... They might have won more championships. They might have won all six. They would have. They might have won seven or eight championships instead of two. And they only won their two titles the two years that Michael Jordan wasn't in the league. I'll never know. But what Michael Jordan gave to the league was the transition of an athletic, really unbelievably athletic guy that not can, not only could jam, but he can fly. He brought basketball to a whole nother level. Competitive nature of who he was as an athlete. Nobody can compare themselves at that competitive nature except maybe Phil Jackson or Kobe Bryant. Kobe Bryant, and I, I will give Kobe Bryant a lot of credit on this. His understanding of winning and wanting to win had the same fierce attitude as Michael Jordan did on the basketball court every time he stepped on the court. Michael Jordan played like it was his last game every day. He would practice like it was his last day playing the game of basketball. And I was talking to Speedy before we even started the show. I said, Michael Jordan really only hurt himself uh, for a significant amount of time his second year of his NBA career. After his rookie of the year season. He missed 60-some-odd games. He was durable in college, too. After that, Michael Jordan didn't miss anything, even when he had the flu in the playoffs and what he mm-hmm. did in the, in the playoffs. Michael Jordan was on a whole nother level. And what you're seeing right now in the last dance, the 98 Bulls, the last time, and, and, and the whole story and, and the whole name of this documentary came from Phil Jackson. Because the 98 season... He named that season the last dance. And sometimes that's something that could put pressure on a team, extra pressure to be able to do it. But they rode it comfortably and made it work for another year. Even with, again, egos clashing with Pippen getting mad at the organization with Rodman. We talked about that earlier. Who knows what he's thinking at any moment. And some, a lot of those role players they brought in. A lot of times that could apply pressure on teams, but it didn't get to them. And they were able to finish out out. And watching in the first two episodes, you really don't see... As much as you want to see. And I want to watch all the episodes straight through. I don't want to watch one episode here. One episode there. They're giving two episodes every single Sunday. And they were supposed to start this in June. They weren't doing it in April. But because of everything going on in uh, the world. And COVID-19. And really keeping people in their house. They want to give something to the people. For something sports like. For people to uh, you know really to watch. And and connect with. And you know it's going to get a ton of ratings right now. Absolutely. It already has. (laughs) But to me right now, what you're seeing is, is something that maybe you young people, including you, Speedy, you weren't alive. in. Nope. Well, you were alive in 98, but you were a kid. You didn't even right. know what the Chicago Bulls were nope. at the age. How old were you? Three? three? Three years old. I had no idea who the Chicago Bulls were. I was alive in 98. I was 16 years old when the 98 Bulls were at the top of the peak of their games. The when the Bulls were at the top peak. And I remember before the season started, nobody was sure, was sure if Scottie Pippen was going to come back. Nobody was sure that Michael Jordan was going to come back if Phil Jackson wasn't going to get that one-year extension for $6 million. And by the way, when he got that ex- extension, he went into Jerry Krause's office, and Jerry Krause said, this is your last hurrah. This is your last right. season. 